Fat people should never eat again. Honest truth. Obesity is a choice. But let's be real. Nobody wants to be fat. Nobody does. Go ahead and say something, mother I was fat too. And it was hard as every day to get up. I know what it feels like. And that's what obesity is. It's death. This lady was saying that obesity is genetic. I'm it's your food choices. It's your food choices. Did you know the World Health Organization estimates there's 1.9 billion people suffering from obesity? That's almost 2 billion people eating themselves to death. The worst part? Obesity is a self-induced disease. In fact, it's a made-up disease. No one even knew what obesity was 100 years ago because it was basically non-existent. So instead of calling it obesity, call it self-neglect. No one is born obese and no one must remain obese. It's directly related to the amount of food you eat and your activity level. We should not normalize obesity. It's not healthy, it's not good for your internal organs, it's not good for your joints, and it shortens your lifespan. Do I really think fat people should never eat again? I mean, why not? What's the worst thing that could happen? But before I tell you, first let me tell you why I feel this way. I come from an obese family. My own mother battled life-threatening cancer for years that was related to her obesity and had to have both her breasts removed before she finally got the wake-up call that she needed to take better care of herself. My uncle, who was one of the smartest, most loving and charismatic men I've ever known, died at the age of 59 from health issues directly related to his obesity. He left behind a wife, three kids and seven grandkids. How do you think his wife feels as a widow? How do you think his kids felt without a father? What's it like for his grandkids who never got to know their grandfather? And what upsets me the most is that it was completely preventable. I think most people will agree that the most important thing in life is family. But if you're obese, every single day that goes by that you refuse to change your lifestyle, you're choosing your food over your family. That's selfish. In fact, I guarantee everyone who watches this video has a family member, friend, or at least knows someone obese that needs to make a change. And if this video saves at least one person from feeling the heartache and grief I've felt, then it was worth it. So why should fat people never eat again? And I know what you're gonna say. That's the stupidest thing you ever heard. If they never eat again, they'll die. But notice, I didn't say normal, healthy, active people should never eat again. I said fat people should never eat again, at least until they're not fat. What happens if a morbidly obese person just stopped eating altogether for two or three months? Are they really gonna die? F no, they'll actually get healthier. Numerous studies have proven that when weight loss occurs, all biomarkers and overall health improve. To give you an example, think about bears. They literally do this every year. They fatten themselves up as much as possible in preparation for winter hibernation, where they'll go months without eating and survive completely off of their fat stores. And guess what? Human bodies work the same way. Did you know that one pound of fat equals 3,500 calories of stored energy? 3,500. That means a person who's 50 pounds overweight has 175,000 calories of stored energy in their body. And a person who's 100 pounds overweight has 350,000 calories of stored energy on their body. When you think about it on those terms, maybe then you'll understand why I say fat people never actually need to eat again, or at least until they reach a healthy body weight. But then I hear my haters saying, Tanner, you're a idiot. It's impossible for people to just stop eating. Really? Is it impossible? Actually, it's entirely possible. Let me show you. Back in 1967, Angus Barberi was a morbidly obese man and one of the fattest men in the world. He was knocking on death's door, but he single-handedly saved his own life. How did he do it? Simple. He ate nothing for over one year, 382 days to be exact. He made a choice and just stopped eating. He did this under medical supervision where doctors ensured he stayed hydrated and supplemented with all the necessary vitamins and minerals. He lost over 280 pounds. And if you don't believe me, I've linked the article in the description below and it's a fascinating read and just goes to show you how powerful the mind can be when you choose to harness this power. Now, if you truly want to stop eating yourself to death, the first and only place to start is to take 100% responsibility for your health. Obese people can make every excuse in the world why they're fat and unhealthy, but it boils down to one thing, choice. Healthy people don't have to be healthy. They choose to be healthy. Just like fat people don't have to be fat. They choose to be fat. No one forces them to overeat on shit food or drink too much alcohol. No one forces them to sit on their ass all day and never exercise. They do that willingly. And I know what you're gonna say. It's not that simple, Tanner. Obesity is an addiction, but hear me out. It is that simple. And I know I'm gonna get some pushback on this because people will tell me addiction is not a choice. Being a drug addict, an alcoholic, or suffering from obesity is not a choice. Here's how I look at that. No one is born obese. No one held a gun to your head and forced you to overeat on shit food, do drugs, or drink alcohol. You do that willingly. You choose to do that. So once you cut through all the bullshit 
and eliminate all excuses, you will realize everything in your life is a choice. In fact, every single person on this earth is where they are because of every single choice they've made in their life up to this point. But then people want to blame their external circumstances, such as their family history, social upbringing, or genetics. That's blame shifting. That's eliminating personal responsibility. That's saying you are powerless, and that's bullshit. You are not powerless. You have control of your life, which is why you must accept that your health is your responsibility. Your health is your choice. Now, can your friends or family have an influence on your lifestyle? Absolutely. But again, do your friends or family hold a gun to your head and force you to overeat and sit on your ass all day? No, they don't. That's on you. Now, can your genetics make you more predisposed to obesity? Yes. But again, no one comes out of the womb fat and unhealthy. Your genetics do not magically produce calories and turn you into a fat ass overnight. You must eat in a long-term calorie surplus and remain sedentary to become obese. In other words, your genetics may load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. So again, it's on you. So if you want to make a real and lasting change in your life, you must have that fundamental mindset shift. Eliminate all excuses. Stop blame shifting. Stop pretending to be a victim. And as I said, take 100% responsibility for your health and consequently your life. Now I'm fully aware that virtually no obese person watching this video will just stop eating for one year like Angus Barberi. And I'm not saying you have to. But if you want to stop eating yourself into an early death, you must put positive constraints on your life and build a healthier relationship with food. And the best way to do that is to eliminate all processed foods, eat more protein, and take the protein test. Now what's the protein test? The protein test is the single best way to decipher between a food craving and actual hunger. Here's how to do it. Anytime you think you're hungry, I do not want you to eat. Instead, first ask yourself, am I hungry enough to eat a piece of pure protein right now, such as a piece of chicken, fish, or steak? If pure protein does not sound appetizing, then you immediately know you're not truly hungry. You're either bored, emotional, or having a craving. But if pure protein does sound appetizing, then go eat pure protein. Here's a fact. Not a single obese person on this earth became obese from eating too much protein. Now I know I'm gonna get some pushback on this too and critics will say, the only thing that matters for weight loss is your energy balance and calories in versus calories out. And that is true. Carbs and fats don't make you fat. Eating too many calories makes you fat. It's just most processed, hyperpalatable foods that are extremely easy to overconsume because they're chemically engineered to throw off your body's natural satiety hormones tend to be full of carbs and fats. So instead of continuing to mindlessly overeat on carbs and fats, just eat your protein first. Protein, especially high quality protein like steak and chicken, are extremely satiating foods that keep you feeling fuller for longer, which is why the carnivore or meat and fruit only diets work so well for weight loss. As I said, people aren't getting fat from eating too much protein. It's basically impossible to eat in a long-term caloric surplus on a high protein diet, which is why cutting out processed foods and the protein test works so well. The best part, the protein test works for everyone and is one of the most effective ways to build a healthier relationship with food and avoid overeating. So if fat people want to stop digging their own graves with their knife and fork, they must realize that it's not too late to change and that health is a choice. Eliminate excuses, stop blame shifting, cut out processed foods, eat more protein, and have some discipline. And remember, this is not a fat shaming video. This is a self-help video with brutal honesty to empower you. Your health is a personal responsibility, and the day you start to hold yourself accountable for the food you eat and your activity level will be the day you start to get healthy.